Have you received a notice from your children's school about parvovirus or fist disease and wondering what that is and why you should be concerned about it? We're going to talk all about fist disease in today's episode. What are the symptoms? How can you prevent it? And why should you maybe be concerned? Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I'm a board certified pediatrician and a mom myself. Today, I want to talk a little bit about something called parvovirus B19, also called Fifth disease, because if you're local to my community here in Westfield, New Jersey, um, we are currently seeing an outbreak in our school systems, particularly in some of our um, preschools. So I thought it might be helpful to review a little bit about what parvovirus or fist disease is. What are the symptoms? Why are we concerned about it? So parvovirus B19, which is a virus in the family member of parvoviruses, is also called fist disease or erythema infectiosum. The reason that it's called fist disease is because it is an incredibly common school age virus. And traditionally, we thought it was the fifth disease that children got or acquired, and so that's how it got its nickname, fifth disease. It is more common here in the United States in the late winter, early spring to early summer. So it's kind of one of these viruses that has a seasonality that is tied to temperature. That's why here in the U.S., again, we commonly see it late winter to early summer, which is in line with what we're currently seeing with this current outbreak. So what are the symptoms of parvovirus B19 when we might suspect that your child has it? Symptoms typically include mild cold-like symptoms. Um, Children may present with fever, headache, cough, sore throat, rash, and joint pain, although typically the rash is seen in children and the joint pain is seen in adults. Again, it tends to be pretty mild. So 20% of people who have parvovirus B19 will be completely asymptomatic. They won't even know that they have it. Um, which can be, get a little bit difficult for isolating people who are infected, especially if their symptoms are mild or asymptomatic. Mm-hmm. In children, they get a typical rash um, that often occurs on the faces and cheeks. It's often called the slap cheek rash. So you can see a picture of that here. Typically, the rash occurs after the fever and cold-like symptoms. Once the rash is present, a child is no longer contagious. So again, it makes it incredibly hard to contain spread of parvovirus B19 because the classic diagnostic symptom is the slap cheek rash. Um, And once that presents, a child is no longer contagious. So they're really only contagious in the phase where they're having mild um, upper respiratory tract infection symptoms, or um, they may be completely asymptomatic. And adults, typically um, they might present with joint pain. It can occur in one joint or multiple joints. This is especially seen in adult females. Um, And this joint pain typically lasts one to three weeks, but it may last many, many months. So for adults, this can be um, one of the more concerning long-term symptoms seen with parvovirus B19. So why do we really care besides the fact that the joint pain is uncomfortable? We really care about parvovirus B19 virus in two specific populations. One, pregnant women, we're going to talk about that in a second. And then two, children with underlying blood disorders or who are immunocompromised. Again, for most children and adults, parvovirus B19 is a mild disease. However, in some, it can cause severe anemia. Those who are particularly at risk for severe anemia are those with underlying blood disorders like thalassemias, sickle cell disease, leukemia, or those who are immunocompromised or have weakened immune systems. Signs of severe anemia can be things like paleness, fatigue, um, exercise intolerance, lethargy, decreased appetite, um, high heart rate, feeling like your heart is beating fast. Those are called palpitations. So if your child has had that characteristic rash on their cheek and they're experiencing any of these other symptoms like fatigue, paleness, um, lethargy, not eating as well, Those would be signs where I would recommend that you come in or contact your medical um, provider immediately to have them um, evaluate your child to see if they think they may need a workup for anemia as well. So the second population that I uh, mentioned, Parvo B19 virus, may be concerning too, is pregnant women. 
if a pregnant woman believes they've been exposed to a case of Parvo B19 virus, they should contact their obstetrician or healthcare provider as soon as possible. It is not common, but an infected mother can spread this virus to their fetus, resulting in severe anemia. Rarely, this may cause a miscarriage. Parvo B19 virus infection in pregnancy um, can increase the risk of miscarriage by approximately 5%, and that risk is greater in the first two trimesters. So again, if you're pregnant and you believe you've had exposure at any trimester, you should just contact your healthcare provider for next steps for working up and monitoring. So because there's an outbreak locally um, and we have some pregnant mamas, I usually get the question about after what are the signs and symptoms that they should be looking at, um, especially if they have a child who's in the school age or in pre-K. Um, the next question I always get is like, how is this spread? So how can I prevent and protect myself? Parvo B19 virus is spread by respiratory droplets or again, during pregnancy, directly from the mommy to the baby. A person is considered most contagious when they have fever or flu-like symptoms, um, and they are usually not contagious after they have the rash or joint pain. I also get some questions from parents about can they get it from their pet dog or cat because they've had a dog or cat who has been vaccinated against parvoviruses. So parvo B19 is a specific subset of the family of parvoviruses, it only infects human beings, so you cannot get this virus from a dog or cat. Also, your dog and cat cannot get this virus from an infected person or from you. Um, dogs and cats can get infected with other parvovirus families, um, and they should receive vaccination to protect them from parvovirus because it can make your pets quite sick as well. So then the next question I usually get is, how can I prevent or protect myself from getting this infection? Unfortunately, there is no vaccination available for parvovirus B19. The best way to protect yourself is to do the standard um, contact precautions we've talked about in a few of our other episodes. That includes one, washing your hands really well with warm soap and water. Two, trying to avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Parvovirus is a typically a respiratory tract infection, so it infects the mucosal lining of our nose eyes and mouth, um, and so you want to avoid touching those areas to minimize the spread and to protect yourself. You want to cover your mouth and nose when you cough and sneeze and encourage your children to do so as well. Um, and you want to encourage your children and yourself to avoid contact with any sick people and to stay home if you yourself is sick. There is no specific treatment for parvovirus B19. It is mostly a mild illness that resolves on its own. However, if you are a patient who has been diagnosed with a complication from parvovirus, such as anemia or joint pain, there are specific treatments um, for those, and you, um, they're usually guided by your physician. So I would, again, encourage you to reach out to your physician if you believe you've had parvovirus B19 um, and you're having joint pain, or you believe that your child is anemic because they're fatigued or pale, um, or if you are um, pregnant. Overall, I hope you find this information helpful and empowering to you. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, again, please leave those in the comments below. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com. And don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.